So part A then, still using the 1997 higher maths paper, this time paper 2, numbers 8 and 9. Missing at number 7, because number 7 was just a test of comprehension of a topic outside the course by giving an example, which you then have to replicate with different figures. So first of all then, it's going to be try question 8. So same as before then. Pause it, try it, and then check it. Right, question 8. Exponential growth and decay type equation. If k was positive, it'd be a growth. If k was negative, it'd be a decay. Here it's talking about carbon-14 carbon decays. It's a decay equation, so you can expect k to be negative. And in fact, that's what you need to do in part A, find the value of k. Now, to find the value of k, I'll need to have numbers to put in for y, y naught, and t. t is the time taken, y is not the initial amount, and y is what's left after a certain time, t. But you don't need to be given precise values for these two. Another thing you could be given would just be some connection between them. Like what fraction is y of y naught? Or what percentage is it? <coughs> and that's what it tells you. It says that when t is 5,700, the amount left is half. That's what it's called, the half-life. It's half of what you started with. It doesn't matter what you started with, it'll be a half of it. So if I substitute that in, y will be a half of what you've started with. e to the 5,000, whoops, 700 k. And it's k you have to find. Well, it doesn't matter what y is, that's going to go across and divide. If you just made up a figure like 100, you'd have to call that 50. But when you take it across and divide, it's still going to be a half. That saves you the grief of having to think of what's 50 over 100. So for this part, what's going to be? e to the 5700k equals a half, having divided and then just reversed it. Now, to get down to this part, I need to remove the function e. The inverse of e to the power, the inverse of the exponential, is the log. You don't need to take logs of both sides. If it had been sine of something equals some other number, you'd have automatically said inverse sine, square, square root. E inverse log. 5700k is log base e of a half, which means k will be log base e of a half divided by that 5700. You put it into your calculator, I've got one I prepared earlier, and it becomes negative, has to be for a decay, negative 0.0001216 and so on. Now, does it want a certain degree of accuracy? It says the three significant figures. So final answer, negative 0 0.000, the first significant figure is the first non-zero figure, 122. So that's part A. Done. Part B. It says, <coughs> what percentage will be left after a thousand years? Well, that means I now know K, I know T, so it's just putting figures into a formula. And it, again, it doesn't matter what I start with. You could call it 100 if you like, but there's no point. You'll get the fraction from it. So I'll just write it in my equation. Y equals Y naught E, now I know K, negative point zero 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 one two two. Or if you wanted to be fancy, you could put in that original value, keep it exact. If you've still got that in your calculator, use the answer function. Times a thousand years, times a thousand. Oh, well, that's just going to knock off the zeros and make it point one two two. The point, that's just a fraction. <coughs> so when you type that into a calculator using either the exact values or that value there, you end up with y equals y naught times 0 0.8851 and so on. Just typing that in. That quite clearly shows you what proportion you've got of the initial amount. You've got 0 0.885 <coughs> of it. What expresses express as a percentage, 88.5. So that means you still have 88.5%. So y equals, if you want, you can write it that down, 88.5% of y naught. What percentage remains? That would do for the answer. Or well, you could write a little sentence out. 88.5% of the C14 remains in the sample. There we are. Ooh. Question 8. Right, now, question nine. So, seems for pause, try it, and then check it. Number nine, part A. There's some sine curve here that's been transformed in some manner. You have to find the values of P, Q, R, 
and u will piece the amplitude, q is the vertical shift, and r is the horizontal shift, the phase. Right, well, the thing is, there's two possible ways of arriving at that from a sine curve. You could have started with the normal sine, and then there's a shift up and a shift along, or you could have started with the upside down sine, an amplitude that's negative, and still shift it up and then move it back. It would take less to do that. Both answers would be okay. But I think I'll just take the positive value. So taking it as it's been shifted up and then along, along more than the upside down when it went back, admittedly. Right, well, first bit, P. That's amplitude. Well, it goes from 4 to negative 2, so that's a difference of 6. That means it must be going up and down 3. So the amplitude is 3. If you take it the other way, the amplitude would have been negative 3. Next, Q, the vertical shift. Well, it goes up. It should only have been 3 up, but it's up at 4. So that means it's going back down 3, makes that at 1. So it's oscillating 1 up. So Q is 1. R, <coughs> how much has it been shifted? Well, you can't go by these points because they are not on the axis. Those aren't the original 90s and 180s and 270s. They're up here. But these points remain true to their nature. So if it had to have been the original sign, take the wavelength before, that minimum point would have been here, shift it up one, which is 90 behind the axis. So it's 90 to get to there, and then it says move another 50. So R is going to be 90 plus 50, which is 140. But that's 140 forward, so I should have put this down, just put that in a bracket there. So R is negative 140 degrees. Then the last part, U. Well, U's a top. Now that top should have been at 90. It's going forward 140. So U, oh, I wrote a vector. U is going to be, it should have been at 90. It's going forward 140, which means it's at 230. So those are the three parts. The four parts, I'm doing well, for part A. For part B, find the values of S and T. Well, those are coordinates. The thing to remember, of course, is T isn't an original 90 or 180 or 270 IX axis point that's just been shifted. That's up here now. This is somewhere different. This is a standard thing. If you've got an equation, a coordinate equation, and there's coordinates to find, put them in. So to find s, you just start with 0s. Put it into that equation, which reads y equals 3 sine x minus 140 plus 1. And then you just put those numbers into it. So you're going to have y is going to be called s. So s is 3 sine x is 0 minus 140 degrees plus 1. Now that's just button pressing. There's no equations to solve. So you just press the buttons there and you get out your answer. So from that, S is going to be negative 0 0.9283 and so on. It doesn't say about accuracy, so I'll just say S equals negative 0 0.9283, 9, 928, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, Right, that's for S. For the second bit in B, find the value of T. Well, you have the equation Y equals 3 sine x minus 140 plus 1, <coughs> substitute in t0, so that's 0 for y, I'll put that on the other side, so t for x, so I've got 3 sine t minus 140 plus 1 equals 0. An easy equation to solve because there's only one mention of the variable, so you can just get rid of everything else, you can dig down if you get it, get rid of the 1, get rid of the 3, get rid of the sine, then get rid of the 140. Right, so a couple of steps in one. So sine t minus 140 equals, take the 1 over negative 1, divide by the 3, negative a third. So t minus 140 will be inverse sine of negative a third. Yes, I know I'm lazy not putting in the negative signs. A, next part, inverse sine of negative a third. You could use a graph to see where those negative answers are. But I'll just concede to popular demand and use the all sine tan cos. Now that means I'm looking for a negative sign, so the angles, the acute angles will be there, give me these two as the angles that I want. Just using the inverse sign of negative a third, you get that acute angle to be 19.5 degrees. 
So putting it in those two positions then, you will have either 19.5 beyond 360, you'll have to put it over here, which would be 199.5 degrees, or you'd have 119, you'd have 19.5 less than 360. Did I say 360 there? I forgot what I said. Which is 340.5. Next part. <coughs> into the 140. That means I have to add 140 onto them both. Well that pushes that up to 339.5 but it pushes that right over the edge to 480.5. But that's not wrong because the sines and cosines go in forever. You draw a sine curve and you're looking for these answers. They go in forever. If I've got an answer over here or over here which is out of range. I can get back to original answers just by going back a wavelength. Just transpose it back a wavelength. If you get pushed over the edge, then just take it back to find previous answers. So 339 is fine, but take 360 off of that, and that gives me 120.5. So 120.5, since it's the first occurrence in this equation, is the one that I want. Not this one over here at 339.5. So find the value of t, well t will be that. t will be 120.5 degrees.